Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another video in my Man Booker Long List review videos series. Uh, if you're new to this, the Man Booker Long List was announced end of July the 24th and I'm reviewing the books on the list written by female authors. And today, uh, on in my fourth review, it's A.C. Edugian's novel Washington Black, published this month, beginning of August. I will leave links to my earlier reviews um, of Milkman, Everything Under and Snap uh, down below and also a link to the Man Booker Goodreads Book uh, Club uh, where we discuss the whole long list. It's a really great group so if you are interested in it, join it uh, and join the discussion and you will also find a link to all the long listed books in the description box. Okay. Enough of the preliminaries. Back to the book, Washington Black by A.C. Edutian. A.C. Edutian is a Canadian writer. She was born in 1978 in Calgary. Um, her parents were immigrants from Ghana, uh, but I don't think it's proper to call her an African-American writer because she's not from the U.S., but tell me. I don't know. Anyway, um, she writes historical fiction and I think she's most famous for her book published in 2011, Half-Blood Blues, in which she tells the story of a jazz musician in the 1930s Berlin and Paris. Um, Washington Black is also historical fiction. It's set in 18, or it starts in uh, the early 1830s um, in, um, on Barbados on a um, slave farm called Faith. Uh, our main character, uh, the title character from the book, is at that time, so in 1830, an 11 year old slave boy uh, called Washington Black. And no, he's not called Black because he is Black, but because the, the um, slave owner's name is Richard Black. Um, Washington Black, or as his you know, friends call him Wash. Uh, we will follow his story from the beginning as an 11-year-old slave uh, on this uh, plantation uh, until he's a grown-up, middle-aged man. Um, the first part is set on the plantation where we not only meet Washington Black, but uh, uh, a couple of other slaves with whom he's friends, especially a big kid, Catherine, um, a 30 something year old woman, a quite tough uh, a, a woman, and we also meet the new owners uh, of the plantation, um, Edmund uh, Wilde and his brother. Uh, the brother Christopher, called Titch, um, is the second main character in the book because Christopher is uh, an inventor, an explorer, and he is on the plantation of his brother uh, to conduct experiments because he wants to build a balloon, a, a cloud uh, cutter, as he calls it. And he um, uh, gets as a gift, quote unquote, he, he gets Washington Black as a personal assistant. Um, so the first part is set there, and then um, due to some events, uh, Christopher Titch and Washington Wash, uh, they flee together in the cloud cutter and from that moment on the book develops into an adventure story. Um, they travel to the Arctic Circle in search of uh, Christopher's father, uh, they travel to London, uh, Washington learns to not only learns to read and write uh, because he has to take the measurements uh, for Titch, but he, it's also discovered that he has a real talent for drawing. Um, um, then he invents later on, on these travels, uh, he becomes, Washington becomes an inventor. Uh, then we go to London, uh, where he uh, meets, you know, the, your typical early 19th century scientists, uh, naturalists. Um, we travel to Morocco. Um, so it's, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the, the cover, you can see that it's an adventure story because you have this flying ship um, as a symbol on, on the cover. Um, I, I, I like the book. 
uh, but I wasn't blown away with it, uh, blown away by it. I thought the writing was really good, and Edugian is a fantastic storyteller. She just takes you by the hand, and you know, you are uh, whisked away uh, into all these adventures, and and you know, like I said, from the Arctic Circle to Morocco and London and back, and so the, this part is is great, um, and the the development of Washington becoming a young man despite all his hardship because he he you will read when you read the book he also has uh, not only the the slavery but he he has a serious accident um, and that part where you where you really uh, you know get into the character and and um, travel with him and on his life journey but also on the very literal journey I think that that's great and it's a page turning book you want to know what happens next you want to know how it ends um, I like I said I liked it but I wasn't blown away and that was because I in the end I was a little bit disappointed by the fluffiness of of the book it's it's uh, I called this this video "Feel Good Fairy Tale" because, despite um, the the very harrowing beginning, where you see how life is for a, a young uh, uh, black slave in the 1830s on this plantation, I think it's the best part of the book for me. Um, but despite that, um, the whole adventure of what uh, Washington. Uh, what kind of adventures he he uh, encounters and and the life he gets, it makes you feel warm and fuzzy somehow, despite um, the the horrible things that happen to him. And I I this didn't quite gel with me, if you know what I mean. Um, I thought the the description of almost satirical description of the early or mid 19th century scientists and how they worked and what they did and it was really good and it was funny at times uh, people who did you know who explore the workings of the the human flesh and and start to cut up cut off things and and animal life um, I think there's a lot of research that, that had gone into the book and that's done really well but for me, the, the whole uh, context of, of slavery and um, uh, the horrible life people led during that time on the plantation, it was sort of covered with this fluffiness. And I that just didn't work for me that well. So uh, if you want to read... Uh, if you're into adventure stories, you know, like almost Jules Verne-like, um, with a with a, a young black protagonist who um, overcomes adversity and you know f finds his calling, you, you, th this is the right book. But I I probably expected something a, a little more, a, a little heavier, if you know what I mean. Um, uh, and that that was probably the cause for my, yeah, disappointment is is a very big word, but the the reason why I say I like the book, but I wasn't blown away uh, by it, and it's not a book I think that you know will stay in my mind as a as a book a historical novel about slavery. It will stay in my mind as a historical novel about uh, the adventures of a young boy becoming a man later on. Um, uh, I still think this is a, a very strong contender, certainly for the shortlist, and I wouldn't be all too surprised uh, if it were a contender even for the win. Um, I, let, let me just say the shortlist, I'm pretty sure. If, if this book doesn't make the shortlist, I, I would be really very surprised. But again, it's it's a, a good read, it's well written, it's adventurous, uh, it has a lot of color and flavor, um, but it for me it didn't have quite the substance um, uh, that I expected from a book dealing uh, with slavery and having a, a slave 
by the way, Washington Black will be a free man later on. But, you know, if the central character is a slave boy from Barbados, I just expected something a little bit more, with a little bit more substance. Anyway, this was my take on Washington Black. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know down in the comments whether you read the book and what you think uh, of it. Oh, and by the way, I will leave... Um, a link to a really very interesting and good review from Eric over at Lonesome Reader, which he wrote on his blog. I will leave that down below. And also uh, an interview that Essie Edugian did with her uh, publisher, Serpent's Tale, uh, where she explains how she got the idea for the book, which is you know, very inf uh, interesting and informative. You might want to check it out. Um, and like I said, talk to me in the comments, and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye-bye.